Allah is the owner of cure. He is the giver of your food and drink. He is the giver of guidance. None guides except he who is guided by Allah. No one will ever be guided unless Allah has guided them. And subhanallah, nobody can help themselves from misguidance if they are not rightly guided by Allah. Similarly, the quenching of your thirst, the food and the drink is from Allah. Your clothing is from Allah. All of that is mentioned even by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he says that Allah Almighty says, Ya ibadi, Allah says, O my worshippers, Kullukum dalun illa man hadaytuhu fastahduni ahdikum. All of you are astray besides the ones whom I have guided. So seek guidance from me and I will guide you. Ya ibadi, kullukum arin illa man kasawtuhu fastaksuni aksikum. All of you are naked. You, you are unclothed besides those whom I have granted clothing to. So seek from me and I will clothe you. That's what Allah says. Allah says, كُلُّكُمْ جَائِعٌ إِلَّا مَنْ أَطْعَمْتُهُ فَاسْتَطْعِمُونِي أُطْعِمْكُمْ All of you are hungry. You don't have food except those whom I have provided food for. So ask me and I will give you. May Allah give us food and drink. May Allah give us guidance and good health. May Allah give us goodness in every way. So that hadith Qudsi, which means a hadith where the Prophet, peace be upon him, is mentioning what Allah had said. That is a powerful narration which backs up what Ibrahim alayhi salam is saying. This verse of the Quran, which means it confirms it. So Ibrahim alayhi salam is saying that he is the one who feeds me. He is the one who quenches my thirst when I'm sick and ill. He is the one who grants me cure. So does that mean I should just sit back, relax when I'm sick and, you know, continue the cough and continue whatever else and just tell myself, well, Allah will cure me. Allah will cure me. No. You start off with your home remedies, you go to the doctors, you have your medics, medicine, whatever else. You go to the professionals, you may go to the hospitals. All of that does not negate the fact that Allah was the one who cured you. Because he made all that available. He gave man the brain, he gave man the understanding, the capacity, the ability. And he expects you to do that. But still, the ultimate curer is Allah. How many have had simple diseases that have never been cured? And medicine has given up, but then Allah cures them miraculously later on. That goes to prove that we seek medication, but sometimes Allah might choose not to cure us through that medication. Perhaps another one, and perhaps something simple. Maybe a home remedy, perhaps the black seed oil, and so on. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness, my brothers, my, my sisters. My brothers and sisters, we all would like to be servants of Allah in a way that's pleasing to the Almighty. We'd like Allah to be pleased with us. So Allah Almighty wants to be pleased with us too. He asks us to make a little effort in that direction. If you make a little effort in that direction and you pick up wherever you've gone wrong, correct yourself, regret it, seek the forgiveness of Allah, you become closer and closer to Allah. And then he describes his worshippers. He says, these are my worshippers, the worshippers that really deserve my mercy. Those who deserve my mercy, they are the ones known as the worshippers of the most merciful. So the reminder benefits us. Many times we listen to something, we listen to the same message with different words, we listen to the same message with a third set of words. All of that is a reminder. And the Quran tells us, And remind, keep reminding. For indeed, the reminding benefits those who truly believe. So this is a reminder as well, again, from Allah Almighty to say, do you know what? My worshippers, the worshippers of the most merciful, he mentions the quality of mercy because that is what they will achieve. The following people. This is also in Surah Al-Furqan, where first number 63, Allah Almighty tells us, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا The true worshippers of the most merciful are those whom when they walk on earth, they walk with humility. Imagine walking on earth would actually result in you earning the mercy of Allah if you did it correctly. What is it? 
humility, humbleness, no arrogance, no pride. You just be a helpful slave, you be a beautiful person, you be as best as you can, you, work, you walk with humbleness. This is speaking about how to walk. The first quality that Allah makes mention of that He loves and that the people who deserve His mercy are those who don't have pride, arrogance when they walk. They walk with humbleness and humility. Now, obviously when you're driving or you're flying or you're, you're moving from point A to point B, it would be included in this because the term walk is used, but it means those whom when they tread the earth with any conveyance, whether you're on your horseback or whatever else it may be, no arrogance. Then Allah Almighty says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The first thing is your actions, how you walked, how you moved from point A to point B, how you interacted with people during yourself being transported or moving your own self. But the second thing is now that you opened your mouth and others opened their mouths, what you say is of, is of importance. It will result in you earning the mercy of Allah and He would love the way you react to those who are ignorant when you react in the correct way. So He says, when the ignorant address them in an ignorant manner. People are telling you something that is really absurd. He says, the true worshippers of the most merciful who deserve my mercy are those who just say peace and they walk away. They just say peace and they walk away, which means they say a statement that will not inflame what has happened. They extinguish and they excuse and they just depart or they leave with a good word. So ask yourself, are you a person who says a good word and then leaves? If that's the case, good news to you. Because Allah, the second quality He makes mention of is about turning away from those who try to provoke you. That's the word. They try to provoke you. They try to say things that will make you react in a negative way. Don't be provoked. Just say salam and walk away. So this is Allah Almighty telling us, that these are some of the qualities, the qualities of those who will earn the mercy of Allah Almighty. When all the others are gone, when everyone else is asleep, what do you do? Some use that opportunity to engage in prohibited stuff, to engage in immoral behavior. Everyone's asleep, here comes my phone and what I do on it is immoral. May Allah protect us. If you want the mercy of the most merciful and you want his love, you need to ask yourself, can I not use this opportunity to plug in with Allah, to reconnect with Allah by prostrating and bowing in voluntary prayer for him? Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا They prostrate and they stand in prayer for the sake of Allah Almighty. So that is an amazing quality that we should always be thinking about. And then we pray to the Almighty if we want the mercy of Allah. Imagine when you call out to Allah saying, Oh Allah, divert from us. Protect us from the punishment of hellfire. It is very painful. It is the torment of hellfire. Protect us from it. When you say that constantly, do you really think the Almighty will not grant it to you? Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.